Hey guys, this video is brought to you by World of Warships. It's a free-to-play PC game, and it offers the perfect balance of action and strategy. You can command a naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels, including the USS Indianapolis, and you can unlock ships and dominate the ocean. You can even invite your friends to join you and receive unique items and cashback bonuses. If you guys check out that promo code at the bottom of the screen, Battle Stations 2020, you can get 250 doubloons, three days premium account, a million credits, and one premium ship, which is the USS Charleston, plus you get one port slot. This game has great reviews from multiple sources. Be sure to click on the link in the description tab below to start playing today. Hey guys, what up? All right, so in this video, I just want to talk about how annoying this latest Udemy ad is. I, I, I'm sure you guys have seen it. And I just, I can't imagine somebody like, oh my God, that, we're going to go with that. That's going to be the version of our, of our commercial we're going to go with. But then again, I guess I don't expect too much from a company that ripped me off. And if you guys don't know about that, there was a situation that occurred about a year and a half ago or so at the, at this point. But this, uh, like what happened was uh, one of my viewers, they were like, Hey Chris, you know, th I saw this Python programming course and your information's all ripped off. Like they ripped off your videos included in the course. Um, here's a article that's actually talking about it. Troy Hunt is a, uh, it considered to be like an industry expert. The same thing happened to him with Udemy, but what happens is like Udemy claims that, okay, we're like YouTube. If somebody rips off your information and they upload it to our platform, it's not our fault, you know, even though we didn't check it. And you could obviously see it's like multiple different people and stuff. But anyway, that's their approach. It's, it goes back to like the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And that really pretty much protects all the industry giants from any sort of copyright infringement. But basically, my people came to my rescue in, in, that, uh, in that regard because what happened is Udemy is like a multi-billion dollar company probably. And when the viewer had notified me that, that my stuff was pirated, I made a video about it and then did a takedown notice with Udemy saying, hey, you guys are selling this course and like it has my information in it. I never agreed to it. And Udemy was basically like, hey, fuck you. We're not going to do anything about it. So then it, it was like somebody that came along and then posted this on Reddit. And the story ended up becoming the number one story that day on reddit it was like a sunday and it had like fifty five thousand upvotes the bottom line with that is that if you're a single person and in the case of uh of udemy they sold that course with my copyrighted content to something like twelve thousand plus students and they sold it at a price tag of 199 dollars a class so that's over 2.4 million dollars they didn't make that because everybody knows Udemy does not make anywhere near that amount of money. But even still, like, even if they did make $2.4 million, you couldn't even find an attorney. Like, there, you, there's nothing you can do. Like, when we talk about, like, people that get their stuff copyrighted or stolen or whatever, the creator is definitely they, – they, 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 ha they have to prove their claim. And in most cases, like, even if you have money or you, if you have time on your hands – it's probably still not going to be worth the effort. Companies, they pay armies of attorneys to represent them, and there's not much you can do about it. But let's go ahead and look at the programming topic on YouTube. Like when I search programming and I roll back 365 days, so a rolling year from today, and I look at the top videos on here, I see programming with Mosh, and I think he's got some great Python content. 7.1 million views is, is pretty impressive. Uh, clearly... The algorithm has started favoring like longer Python courses versus like mine that had like 800,000 on video one. And it's pretty out of date, I guess, at this point. But either way, it seems that they're like favoring for the tutorials, one tutorial type of thing. I feel like um, the person that started that was, uh, I can't even think of it. What the hell was his name? I can't think of his name. Anyway, I can't. The, the dude's been doing it for a long time, but like he was doing multi videos and then he started doing single videos, and now clearly that's what YouTube favors. Uh, they also favor like literally like trolling. Like this video right here, every programming tutorial, funny as hell, truth, and definitely a troll, but 2.7 million views. Now, if I scroll down on this list, I mean, we're looking at Google coding interview with a competitive programmer. Who knows? Who the hell cares? 
Like you want to get a job at Google? Don't try. That's probably the best thing. That's the best. In fact, fuck it. That's the best piece of advice I can give you. If you want a job at Google, don't even worry about it. Let them come to you. And okay, yeah. So here's an example of that. Like I've never once applied to Google. And here has been, this is a recruiter that actually reached out to me multiple times and including other recruiters. And I'm not trying to say that, oh yeah, I'll just get into Google. I'm sure I'd have to jump through the same bullshit hoops or whatever, but I never bothered pursuing it. Like they came to me, like I was doing my own thing and they came to me. And I think that's probably the best approach. Like why do we have to learn all these algorithms and then apply it to some company and then just wish that we're going to be able to get in? There's massive amount of companies out there where you don't have to have Google level talent and you can get like a very good salary. You can have a very good life and you don't need that bullshit. But like, if you ask me, do I want to work at Google? Yeah, probably. Sure. Like, do I want to work at Google enough to have to go through all the bullshit? No, no, I really don't. And I never even responded back to this recruiter because if they really wanted to hire me, I, I feel like they would really make an effort at that. I wouldn't have a recruiter reaching out to me. I would have a hiring manager or somebody along, uh, a director or somebody. I had a director from Capital One who had actually asked me to apply to their company. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. So yeah, competitive programming, people are looking for that kind of thing. You're looking to solve an algorithm as quickly as humanly possible because they have math skills or they have some sort of genetics that allows them to do that with ease or maybe they have no life. I have no idea what it is. That's I'm not in that group. Like, I'm just not like if Google's going to give me a job, they need to give it to me based on perseverance and the fact that, hey, I built a YouTube channel. I'm self-taught. I worked at a corporation for 15 years. I started my own company. Like those are the type of types of things that a lot of businesses value. And those are the types of things that you need to build for your own resume. And that could be anywhere. Like so it could be websites that you build or like mobile apps or video games, whatever it is. I really, I've always said, you got to build projects. You have to have something that you could say, I did this, I completed this, and here you can even take a look at this or have some sort of record of that if it doesn't exist uh, any longer. Nobody is going to care if, oh, yeah, I took a, a C-sharp course on Coursera or something. I, I watched some YouTuber. I did this. I, like, I, I studied all these algorithms. I, I read how to crack a, the coding interview. Nobody cares about that. They want to know, how did you apply the knowledge that you learned? And the only way you're going to prove that is not even with a college degree. That's how it gets you in. But from there, it's going to be, what did you do with that knowledge? So here is another Google invite. This was to Educon, and apparently it was the second annual one. They wanted me to RSVP, and like I didn't even go to that. I had some personal family issues. I was actually very flattered, and I told them. I was flattered that they invited me to go, but I couldn't make it. Like I had personal family issues, the type of shit that the typical millennial will tell you, oh, you're not going to be able to get the job because you have kids, blah, blah, blah. I just recently turned down the largest offer I've ever had, like the biggest salary I would have ever had. I turned it down. And why? Because I happen to like the company that I work for. So for all the people like Joshua Fluke who says, oh, you can't, you know, these companies don't give a shit about you. And that might be right. But look, it's it's a give and take relationship. You know what I mean? It's about a company that if you find a company that respects your talent, they respect your time, they respect their employees across the board, you stay with that company. You don't jump around and look for a 10% raise here and there and stuff like that. That's not how you get vested in a 401k portfolio. That's not how you become a millionaire. People on YouTube are spouting bullshit. So you guys might be thinking that I'm trying to flex on you. Yeah, I live in one of the richest areas in the world or whatever. You know what? I was a goddamn, like I was a miracle that I graduated high school. I dropped out of college for business administration. I self-taught myself how to do YouTube and programming. I'm not an expert. I have comments like this that come in. It's so funny, micro shit propaganda talking about like why C Sharp is the number one language because I can't think of a better language, guys. That's probably the best one. I can think of off the top of my head that's going to make sure you have a longevity in your career, uh, allows you to do multiple avenues of programming so you don't get your ass burned out just doing UI day in and day out. But I find this uh, this comment great, like this, this gray beard micro shit propaganda. 
and no no uh, hate against that guy whatsoever. I think you know it's a great comment. But I'm like, I grew up in the '80s with my dad calling it that. I love the comment. My dad still thinks they're shit, and it's true. My dad is a Unix guy. He hates Microsoft. And going back to my days, like I used to play video games like Leisure Suit Larry, and I installed that shit with DOS. Like I didn't want to use Windows 3.1. I don't know if that affected my ability to become a programmer, but I know that me hacking away on DOS, installing video games and modding shit back in the 80s had nothing to do with me being a programmer today. At least I don't think so. But maybe it did. Whatever it may be, guys, make sure you subscribe to Chris Hawks, man. I'm going to tell you guys how it is. A lot of people tell me I tell it how it is, and that's what I'm going to always do. And I'm telling you right now, a lot of YouTube is garbage.